Okay, hello. Welcome to What's in Your Bag. We're here today with the million dollar photographer, Jordy. Thank you for the intro. Um, You're welcome. Hey, um, What's in Your Bag crew. My yes. name is Jordy, a commercial portrait photographer from Brooklyn, New York, and Ooh. I'm excited to be on the show. Wow, I'm excited too. And I'm from Jersey, you know, I had to rip my steak because, you know, New Yorkers, y'all be trying to play us, but that's a different conversation <laughs> for a different time. We're super excited to have you here today. So, I you call yourself the million dollar photographer why so the million dollar photographer is a boot camp idea that I formed about two years ago with my business partner Ricardo okay. and um, it's a boot camp that we've designed to help photographers fast-track their photography journey so oh, that they can wow. learn like time-tested business principles mm. so that they can take their business from point A to point B. So mm. that's the name of the new baby, the million dollar photographer. I, I think that photographers often time and production people in general, we don't really get a lot of respect. Yeah. You, you know, so the million dollar photography is, the million dollar photographer is a mindset. Mm -hmm. It's a state of mind that you live in, that you operate from, that you exude, so that when you communicate with people, you're able to sit up with your back straight and command a certain price because you have a process to get the client from where they where they at to where they want to be. Wow, so. I love that. I love that philosophy. I feel like as creatives, it's like that route less taken is often not respected. And I feel yeah. like it is because there isn't a certain amount of logic put behind it. Yeah. So, and it's like for you all, all to be able to give somebody like, you know, that mentorship and that guiding, that's a, that's a beautiful thing to have. You. you know, I, I <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. So do you feel like your background has helped you with that? Um, I saw that you went to school, you went to NYU. Yes. So you said, and there you did computer science. Yes. So you feel like that tied into like you your know, philosophy? I I think it's two ways, right? Mm -hmm. We oftentimes look at skills as separate things, but everything is interconnected. You know, like all your stuff that happened in childhood influences who you are now. Mm -hmm. Everything your parents did and didn't do for you influence who you are now. Yes. So even though computer science is, is its own discipline, I think the structure, the process that they put us through to, hey, look, if you're going to design a, a program, you need to start at the algorithm level. Mm -hmm. And the algorithm is just plain English, step by step, what you're going to do. That's the mm. same thing that you do do when you're writing a paper you have to yes. make the outline it's the same thing you do when you're going on a trip you make a checklist so I think understanding it from that point of view forced me to mm. become a better photographer because I used to hate putting stuff on my calendar I used mm. to hate having to pick up the phone and answer people and have to send things over by a certain deadline I didn't like any of that stuff because yeah. I became a photographer to be free mm. and I didn't think or understand that freedom at that time meant structure. Mm. In my world, I thought freedom mm -hmm. meant I, I do whatever I want. Right. <laughs> Whenever I want. However right. I want. But that's not how you get things done. Mm. And I think like the beautiful part about computer programs is that if any single part of it doesn't work, the entire thing collapses. Mm. And I think that's a metaphor for our lives. The only yeah. thing is that we can get away with it a lot longer. You, you know, like if your leg hurts you today, you could walk on it till it hurts you and like, ah, oh, man, this hurts. But mm. then, you, then you could go till it's swollen until yeah. it's critical condition. Mm. With a computer program, the minute that there's one piece that doesn't work, the entire thing crashes. So mm. I think that kind of tricks me or reminds me sometimes that I need to have structure and that stuff for my photography business, you know? Yes, wow, that you just dropped a lot of gems just now. And I definitely think that's so like, imperative of our processes and I feel like that's why a lot of artists fail and I feel yeah. like that's why a lot of artists also are so rebellious against school because they're like you're trying to force my process you know what I mean when it's like I think that it's beyond forcing your process I think like you forcing said it's structuring it, I know, like, you think. Like, I th that's a good point like they're mm. forcing it as in to create something or maybe because it's not designed for them what do you think about that I think that when people are still trying to figure certain things out, especially yeah. creatively, because creative juices don't just flow. I think a lot of people yeah. think as artists and as creators or photographers, videographers, whatever it is that you do in a field where you take something from your mind and put it out and make it tangible, it's like, what 
inspires you, you know what I mean? Like what is really driving you? A lot of artists we know they're using drugs, they're drinking, they're doing a different lot of things. So it's like, but they feel like this is when they're at their most creative. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like when some, so some people feel like when you try to structure it, even outside of drugs and alcohols, whatever, whatever inspires them, I feel like sometimes when they feel like you try to structure it or you ask them specifically like, hey, does this check off this box, this box, or this box, then they get kind of discouraged or, you know, they feel like uninspired or something. I absolutely think so because I don't think school is designed to support entrepreneurship or yes. people that pursue creative things, you know, because the the process to that, like, is, is frowned upon a lot. Yeah. You, you know, for somebody to get up and decide their, their, their family has a long line of doctors in it, for instance, right? Like, yeah. all of us can relate to that, you know, being a person of color from the Caribbean, from Africa, wherever, you know, like even Asian cultures as well too. Yeah. You come from a long line of people that are dentists, you you know, like they did the needlework, mm. you, you know, and then you're like, hey, like I want to take pictures. Your parents look at you like, what are you doing? Mm. That's kind of crazy, you, you know, but I don't think the infrastructure is set up to really support it. So it's like, how do we even like figure it out, you know? Yeah. So, how did you start to figure it out for yourself? You said you were in college, and um, so what did the beginning look like for you? Like, what inspired you to start really taking photographs? The beginning was a bright sunny day in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my cousin taught me Photoshop in 2012. Okay. And um, at the time, a group of friends and I, we wanted to start taking pictures of people around the school and then, you know, like, memefied a little bit before mm. like, memes were as popular. Mm. He taught me Photoshop. He showed me how to cut the heads off of somebody, put it, put it back on, all wow. of that, you know? And I got excited about that. Mm. When I moved here in December, I... I um, started freelance editing for people, so okay. there were a few Facebook pages that I followed, mm -hmm. and I looked at what the people did, I copied it, and I then made that into my own style, you know? And doing that really, it gave me the early foundation, but I soon realized quickly I had no quality control, so people mm. submit terrible pictures like you mm. like grainy pictures early <laughs> 2000s era bathroom pictures mm. in the mirror dark pictures like that right yeah 2014 i get my first camera by saving two paychecks mm. from an internship that i had at the museum of jewish heritage i bought nothing else <laughs> first two paychecks put everything into a camera mm. and i i it felt like the right decision to make because two years prior Everywhere I went, I see a photographer, hey, um, yo, this lens looks pretty cool. Like, how, how does it work? Like, mm. how do you put this together? Like, oh, mm. wow, how do you use this to do that? Your camera's 20 years old. He's like, yeah, Jordy, once wow. you have good light and a good camera, everything is good. The camera body could be old, but the lens and everything, yeah, you'll be good. I was mm. like, okay, like that, those insights, I was taking them in. So yeah. that was my research, you know, that was my. So what camera did you start off with? It, it's called a Nikon D5200. Okay. So that's like a, I, I bought a red camera. So mm. I like attention, right? <laughs> so, As most Jamaican men do. <laughs> right? But it depends on what you do with the attention, right? Right. So I love attention because I know I have something positive to share. Mm -hmm. So I bought a red camera. Okay. And for like two, three years, I walked everywhere with that red camera, whether it's to an interview, whether mm. it's to, now, you know, like I wouldn't wear it and put it in the interview, but I would have yeah. it with me, you know? Yeah. Like in like the park or public center places, I would, I would have it. Did you have, so you just had it out, you didn't have like a little case for it or nothing, you was just no, I did, but okay. I, but I wanted people to know, like, like they don't know what the camera bags are for. Photographers know what a camera bag look like. Yeah. The average person doesn't. So I was like, right. let me just have it on my neck because I need you to know I need you to know I'm a photographer. So by the time I do decide to not walk around with this, you associate my name mm. with photography. Yeah. I don't know where the thought came from. Impressing that energy upon the universe. Yeah, I, I don't know where the thought came from, mm. but I wanted to go all in. Mm. Meaning that people need to know that this is what I do by any means necessary. Mm. 
even if I'm gonna wear it and look like a fool. You know, I love that. I feel like not enough people are delusional. And I do not mean that in any negative facet. I feel like there is a, you know, with creatives, entrepreneurships and everything, there is a point of walking on faith. And a lot of people act like it's hokey pokey or this, this and that, but yeah. these are real practices of manifestation. When you start walking in something, you will eventually be it, but you have to impress that energy upon yourself first and your environment in order for you to start believing it, to start walking in it. You know what I mean? Like you said, you started with just your camera, you started with making memes, you started with Photoshop and you were in something completely different, but it's like, that's why you have to trust the process, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I like that part that you mentioned so mm -hmm. this is where when you ask me before we start a recording if I do believe in astrology or anything like that right I do believe in the power of the brain mm -hmm. so when you have an idea you you have to get emotionally involved with the idea mm. because the minute that you make the decision it already happened mm. now all you have to do is act in accordance with that thought so I knew I was a success well to go with the theme of the show in the yes. camp, I knew I was a million dollar photographer before yes but now I'm in the process of unraveling it mm. in real time yes sharing my lessons doing mm. this conversation with you like doing the groundwork like learning with people building trying yes. to collaborate with people and putting ideas out that's the process of yes. un unraveling what I already know to be so yes. destiny or decision and hard work is i i think it's destiny because yeah. you do the work to kind of put it in there so i believe in it in that sense of like mm. that is the manifestation process you know you know because it's the belief yes you know i've they have this theory that like you know our purpose sheds in layers like onions so it's like do you feel like your younger child is like you know happy of like the layers that you shed and the purpose that you're walking in now yeah um, I I started out entrepreneurship by selling prepaid phone cards. Mm. So my aunt, she used to sell credit, and then she set me up on selling credit too. Okay. So how she used to do it though, she had a her system set up on her phone. Mm -hmm. So all you had to do was take the person's number, star, you put the credit in, and then you hit pound, and then the person they didn't have to scratch off a card, mm. punch the numbers in the you know, like, top yeah, of their phone. yeah, they just go straight to their phone. Wow, so, this is throwback right here. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, I would have that system <laughs> set up on my phone. So when I'm going around selling credit, mm. my stuff is discreet. Mm. You, you know, nobody know that Jordy selling credit. <laughs> All they, um, like, you remember the geometry sets? No. Right, so we had geometry sets for doing math. So you had a compass. You oh, know, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Like uh -huh. I'm you're like talking that. about the phone cards. Mm -hmm. When you open my geometry set, you see money. Because mm. I'm going around <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday collecting money. Hey, like it's about mm. to be the weekend. You, you know, yeah. like you're about to get, get your girl on three nights <laughs> and run the money. <laughs> So I'm, so yeah, I'm, I know you want to talk. Yeah, so like, look, like I know you need the two hundred, yeah, whatever we'll for the free nights. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta sign up with me now. Come on, buddy. Yeah, right, like so. Yeah. So I'm collecting money. Mm. So you, that Jordy became sad. I'm um, like, by the time I hit like the eleventh grade in Jamaica, mm. I tuned out school. <laughs> because it didn't feel like it was for me mm. but it was the thing that was forced upon me just like any other kid you know like yeah. college is a relatively new idea since about like the 60s or 70s right mm -hmm. so it's been marketed to our parents so they think that if they don't go to college then you don't really have like a life you know and i think that yeah. a lot of our parents for what they did to help us to get here mm -hmm. to where we are that's like real life survival skills now yes granted, they couldn't access certain things because of the rules and hierarchy but i think that there's merit to both you know school yeah. teaches you certain things life teaches you certain things so yeah that jordy is by the time look like i used to sit in class and i would turn my back to the teacher while they're talking or I would be in the back sleeping, talking to friends, not paying yeah. attention because my mind wasn't there in college. Mm -hmm. Why computer science, um, I had a difficult time 
in some of my classes, you know, like I would have to go extra hours for tutoring, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it didn't really sit well with me because I liked the knowledge, but I learned very quickly that I, well, very quickly over two years, yeah. that I wasn't an engineer. So I, I would be in class re reading Photoshop magazines. Mm. Looking at the latest cameras, seeing like the like Matt Granger, Jared Poland, Tony and Northrop photography. Those are like uh -huh. photography educational challenge mm. um, channels on YouTube that like we consume, like F Stoppers magazine, like all that stuff. Mm. Reading all of that in class mm. because for me it wasn't. Maybe it would have been different if I was a photography major. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But that was where my mind was. But I couldn't accept it at the time because I was, I I was scared about what people would say about me. You know, mm. like ma mainly my family. Yeah. You you know you know like mainly like those around me. I have siblings too, so you yeah. know, like in, in a way as like the oldest child, they kind of look up to you. Yeah. So, so, it's, so it's like I'm thinking about that, mm -hmm. but it's like in the back of my mind. I know I want to take pictures mm. and I know if I really gave it that chance I could really be good at it but yeah but it's like you know I'm like man like school yeah man, like I gotta like stick it out and I made a decision in 2019 to take a leave of absence mm. and in taking that leave of absence, I'm like 2020, I'm about to go all in. And I'm yeah. like, I made a website, I started collecting invoices. I'm like, yo. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like seeing Ball is rolling, yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh wait, like 10 people booked me this month, 12 people, seven people booked me this month. I'm seeing like numbers, you know? Yeah. Okay? Like men lie, women lie, numbers don't, mm -hmm. right? So I'm seeing the numbers add up. I'm like, yo, all right, like we have <laughs> something here. Mm -hmm. 2019, I leave. And then 2020, like, I'm like, yo, this, this is about to be my year. First two, three months, stuff is picking up, pandemic happens. Mm. You, you, you know, so to your yes. question, when I made that decision, mm -hmm. back to impressing that idea upon yourself. Yes. When I made that decision, I released a lot of emotion because I was holding a lot in me for years. Mm. You, you know, I'm just like yeah. going through the motions. So I released all those emotions. I made the new decision, and then boom, like the then world happened. came to mm -hmm. So it's like, wow. So what do you do when? It's like, it, cause I feel like that journey is like a marathon, you know, like yeah. it's not a sprint. It's not just like, okay, now it's like you start off, everything's going right. Yeah. You're getting all the invoices, you're, you're scheduled, you're not having no issues with no clients, nothing is happening. So what do you do when, when it gets difficult or when it gets hard or like you said, I mean, shoot, like you said, the pandemic hit. So like what got you through the pandemic? I told myself that um, in 2014 mm -hmm. that I would give myself 10 years to figure out photography. Mm. So I was in year se um, seven. Mm. And what made you give yourself 10 years? You know, people usually think that it's going to be like an instant gratification kind of thing. It was like the first number that I picked that made sense mm. to to me. And like, I think whatever number you choose has to make sense to you. But I think for me, I wanted to give myself a fair chance. Mm. You, you know, you know, as I'm growing, all right. Yeah. I'm gonna hit 30. I'm 26 now. You, you know, you know. So I'm gonna hit 30 in like four years. I was like, look, as I get close to 30, if this does not work, I will save. I, I will happily, because I'm practical too. So I'm like, look, if I'm not making a certain amount of money by year 10 which mm. is in like two, three years from now, I'm gonna pack it up, <laughs> blow off the camera, yeah. be like, yo, should I give my all? Mm. Like no regrets, like straight up. Just and all in. Yeah, like all, all in. in. So I at least know for myself that when I, um, I, I think of life from my deathbed, you know? Mm. I wanna have a big funeral mm. of people that really care about me. Yeah. So, so I'm like, all right, if that time comes, would I know that I gave it my all? Mm. And at least after that 10 years for me, 
I know I gave it my all, that I tried, yeah. I went to every event that I could, every part of New York, spoke to as many people, I tried day in, day out, even when it wasn't good. I'm like, cool, 10 years, doesn't work, I pack it up and I go get a job. And I'll, and I'll work that job and I'll do my best to the two because I think that you should give your all to anything. That you to do. do. You, you know, but I at least have to try. So, so, so that yeah. number made sense for me in that context, you know? Okay, so and so during, during that time, the money that you were making was coming solely from your business? Yes. So, but I lived a tight budget though. Mm. You, you know, okay. so there's yeah. a lot of, um, I still figured out how to party in it. <laughs> you gotta I, make the time for the yeah. fun, you know, you can't completely lose it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But it was a tight budget though, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm um, really... In order to build a business, mm -hmm. you, you have to put money into it. Right. So you have to put money into new equipment, new products, marketing, location, travel, gas, food, all of that stuff. Yeah. And. I understood that in order for the business to grow and what I understand now as a concept is that a business has three stages. Okay. One, you, you have the portion where you make no money. You're mm. losing money. So meaning that you're buying and investing and doing the work, but you're not coming up at a profit. Mm. That, that's a natural cycle, right? Because you're sharpening your skills. Mm. I would say I was in that portion from like year one to six, but that's just my journey. It, because I was putting photography money into photography. Now, yeah. if you have a job that's paying you well and you're pouring money into it, you're gonna have a faster journey. Well, I mean, you know, it's very true. And also like your living circumstances. Mm -hmm. So it's like the days in, the day in and day out of eating, where you're gonna live, all those type of things. Yeah. Did you have support at that time or were you just fully supporting yourself? I, I did have support. Okay. I, I did have support from um, my father and my aunt. Okay. So, yeah. so the level of responsibility was a little bit less than it is now. Yeah. So, but I think around the, the time of the pandemic, that was when everything was all on me. Mm, and yeah. Then, and then I think that was actually when I was now forced. I think sometimes your back has to be against the wall. Yes. You really know who you are. Yeah. And I think at that time, I only had a few clients that I was working with. Thank God for y'all. <laughs> that it now really, uh, I was running on credit, right? Like I literally had to call some of the crediting companies and like make some arrangements to like lower certain interest rates. But you know, like the business was, I was still operational, like stuff was still getting done. Yeah. But, um, you can extend the lifeline of your business with credit. Mm. You, you, you know, so that, yeah. so that was what I did. And, okay. I, and, and, and I think, you know, I got scared because a friend of mine approached me to open up a studio at the time. Mm. And I panicked because I was like, well, if I put this like credit in it, what if the worst happens? Yeah. And for him, the best happened, life change. I'm so mm. happy for him, you know? Yeah. But it just wasn't the right time for me. Yeah. You know, it wasn't yeah. my time yet. So I think that moment in time, I don't remember the question. But Well, um, do yeah. you, so what, um, I'm sorry, I'm just thoroughly enjoying your story, yeah. but I also want to know, like, what practices within yourself do you think kept you along this journey? Like, a, a, do you meditate? Do you read? Like, you know what I mean? Like, because you come into sound decisions and even walking away from an opportunity like that, some people, like, it may break them. Like, you know what I mean? If they're in the midst of their struggle and it's like, dang, this was my opportunity to, like, you know, kind of, you know, make something bigger happen for myself. But, like, how do you know to, like, listen to your inner voice or, like, did you have in your voice like how did that process look for you because I think that we talk a lot about outer, outer success and I want to know more about your inner success too the first three people that I'm gonna name to you have the most impact on my life my grandfather mm -hmm. my father and my mother and they each taught me different things I used to sweep the yard as a young boy mm -hmm. and leave dirt in the yard, right? Yeah. Sweeping in my grandfather, day is done, he's done gardening, feeding the dogs. He comes and sits on the wall. It's like, Johnny, what are you doing? 
And I'm like, Grandpa, I'm sweeping the yard. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, so why you don't finish? I'm like, but Grandpa, mm -hmm. I'm leaving dirt in the yard so that I have something to sweep up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And every day he would say to me, Jordy, never leave a task until it's done. Mm -hmm. He always said that to me. So that's lesson number one. Mm -hmm. Lesson number two. I remember one time I got 23% on, on a math test. Mm -hmm. And most kids at the time, like when their parents w would hear that they have grades like that, they would be like, hey, so which part of the rest of the eight that 77% is? You know, yeah. what my father and my mother did, but my father verbalized it. He was like, so did you do your best? And I'm mm -hmm. like, yo. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't do my best. So, do you think you could improve? And I was like, well, yeah. So then, put it together, try and improve. My mother, I think her impact for me was, she never discouraged me from trying ideas. Mm. You know? That is so important. Yeah. Like, like, like you know, yeah. they, they wanted me to be in school and they were very vocal about that. Yeah. But I think they gave me space. Like, they had their opinions about how certain things worked. You you know? And yeah. that's parents. Like, parents are going to do for you what they, what they think is best for them. Right. It's just a natural cycle of stuff. But you have to realize that she, I think she gave me the space to do different things. So now, with that foundation, 10 years in photography, mm. do it until it's done. Oh damn, computer science is not working. Let me walk to the next thing that I think might work and try. And I've had tons of failures. People cancel on me an hour before, no deposit structure. Mm. But they didn't make me feel guilty about not being the best in that moment. Because maybe if I tried again, so I don't have anxiety around failure and stuff mm. like that. In fact, I welcome it. Mm. So when things don't really work out, like I'm good at damage control, right? So mm -hmm. if something bad happens right now, like earlier, Abu's light was on the thing causing smoke. Mm. I don't even think nobody realized it. Cause we were just like we're in here talking and everything. Yeah. What I did, I went over and looked. I'm like, yo, why is it smoking? I picked it up. I realized, okay, the bag is not burnt that much. Cool. Turn the light the other way. I was like, yo, move the light. Right? But I'm so calm. I'm not like, oh, shit, there's smoke, right? Yeah. Because then everybody's going to be like, oh, shit, like, what's happening? So I, I'm good at chaos control. Mm. Like, I think sometimes I even need chaos to, like, thrive. Like, I need mm. action to be happening around. Mm. I listen to meditation music yes it it helps me to calm down yeah i uh, and i write stuff down a lot too so i i need a list of things that jordy needs to get done every day and yeah. even before that i get a sense of gratification from completing things you know yeah so having those things and i think a few other things more like i work out too like a box mm -hmm. so there is that, like that helps. That um, mind-body connection. Mm -hmm. And I listen to, I, I study success. So I listen to a mm -hmm. lot of audio books. I mm. used to, there was a time where I did read a lot. Yeah. But time is of the essence. Yes. So I find that listening to audio books, I, I consume like, you know, like, Every six months, like maybe like six, ten books. Like in my mm. Audible library, I have like sixty something books that mm. I've listened to multiple times. You, you, you know, so I'm constantly ingesting. I'm very careful about what I put in my mind. Yeah. You know, so yes. Just like how you watch what you eat, I watch what I eat mentally. Yeah. So I think like some of those things kind of help calm me down. That's amazing. I think that those things are so important and it's like it's showing up in your work and it's showing up in your everyday and I think like you know I'm bring it back to Zodiac just to lighten up the mood a bit because he's a Capricorn I'm a Capricorn I love other Capricorns but I don't always meet them as much but they say if you want to get anything done get a Capricorn get around a Capricorn so I've it's like 
<laughs> yeah, they'd be like, you know, we're all about the money and this and that. But I think, you know, we just have our set values that make sense for us and we go about life and try to thrive in it in that way. So it's like, so you feel like you have a good work-life balance as well, like your personal life and things of that nature. I, I don't really think work-life work balance exists. Really? Why? Because the name of my program is Million Dollar Photographer. Yes. And I think depending on the level that you wanted at yeah like i i want the entire game right i don't want average life yes so inherently there's no balance that comes with that like jeff bezos said mm -hmm. this one time that he's thriving for work-life harmony mm -hmm. these days and i like mm. i like the idea that yeah balance implies that you you have a clear distinction between one or two you know that's true so for me i like the harmonious part because in a way my work flow like this mm -hmm. for us is work right you know, like this is us bringing our best selves so that we can produce um, a great output of ideas. Yes. So this is our work. Now, some people might be like, oh, la, 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 what are they doing right here? Because their work is um, starts tomorrow at nine o'clock when mm. they get to the job, some six or seven o'clock, depending on where you work, you know? Yeah. So I think that the harmony is what I'm striving for. So setting boundaries, mm -hmm. right? certain days. Mm. Yeah, like my assistant does a great job of forcing me to mm -hmm. like, look, Jordy, from now on, Mondays to Wednesdays, you are not doing shoots unless you choose. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not going to do what? <laughs> yeah. And I resisted the idea for like months mm. until finally she's like, no, look, you're worrying about the wrong thing. Yeah. You need to add structure and discipline and you will you will be perfectly fine because but she already kind of looked at how the shoots were structured on my calendar. Yeah. And then she kind of realized that trend that okay, m most shoots happen from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm. And like they still happen Monday, Tuesday, but she's like, "Look, you need to rest." Yeah. So, you know, like there is that too. No, um, yeah, for sure. I feel like also as a leader too, so you said you have an assistant, do you have any other team or like, oh, well, you said you have a partner for the Million Dollar Project, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, how do you keep that balance and harmony between those things as well? Like, you know, cause some people don't listen to their assistants. Some people say, I pay you to do this, you know, do that. And you know what I mean? Like some people don't have harmony within their <laughs> their businesses. I literally was having this conversation yeah. with, a, with a dear friend of mine about like business ethics versus like business practices and how like some people don't value you certain things or how they're or what's going on with their co-workers like you know outside of the the office and of course you know not their personal lives or anything like that but it's like kind of like you know personalities and things of that nature yeah. how people handle certain things or how they look or assess or process things or even when they feel more comfortable to speak or not and I, I found with a lot of leaders especially young leaders as yourself that sometimes it's kind of hard to have that like respect and like you know like within their team because it's like you know we all want to be so friendly or cozy especially now because entrepreneurs and the way we all collab with each other is so just like it can be so casual yeah. so it's like how do you like separate that kind of like casualty but also like business Man. I'm sorry I know that's like a super loaded question <laughs> so, so to understand it because yeah I, I think I get that my intuition tells me I get the essence yeah but it's like how do you maintain harmony with friends and family and people that you work with and like all right like we're cool but we also need to get it done right exactly because we were talking about the you know. yeah so i mm -hmm. think for me one there's no ego okay. but i have very strong opinions yeah i'm gonna voice those opinions and i think i work best with people that also voice their opinions yeah but also know how to keep it respectful because i I'm going to stick, I'm a decision maker, right? Right. So my intuition on how the market, like if I'm working with my team right now on a mm -hmm. project, there's a certain intuition that I have about how the marketplace is moving, the opportunities that, that, that we need to attack yeah. that I'm going to make an executive decision on. Now, my, I think my job as the leader in my company is to look at 
what's happening in the marketplace and then very quickly decide if we should go that way. Okay. If in the middle of going that way, we realize that it's the wrong direction, mm -hmm. then we need to have the flexibility to change course. And that comes with accountability. Yes. So back to what my father taught me mm. is, look, like, if you mess up with the decision, like, what's it your best? And maybe at the time, like, look, like, we used to, I, I, I used to do a lot of different kind of projects, events, maternities, baby shower, everything, right? Mm -hmm. The best decision I made was when I cut off events off of my website mm -hmm. because I wasn't getting paid the amount of money that I wanted, mm -hmm. but I couldn't articulate it. So mm -hmm. when I cut it off, people were still inquiring. Mm -hmm. So I doubled my rate. Mm -hmm. When I doubled my rate, I'm happy again. Yeah. But... It was only after the fact of living through that experience. So people that I work with, I enjoy when we're able to communicate. I'm very easy to communicate with. If you have, and I also know when to step back. So even though I'm very strongly opinionated about certain things, yeah. if there's a project that I need to play support, I will be your best supporting character. Mm. And I will do what you need me to do. Yes. And I'm still gonna give my opinions, but it's now on you to not feel like I'm, oh, like, oh, oh, oh he think he knows. Like, yeah. You know, like, we all have different levels of expertise in things. Right. So I think it's this balance of like personalities, you know, and yeah. a lot of times what I've realized, even with people I've worked with, is that if you're not right within yourself, yeah, then when someone like me comes around, I'm going to expose your demons to yourself because in order to be a good business person, I think you have to live in light, which mm. means that you have to really, like there's days when I'm tired, but, yeah. but it's not passion, it's discipline that keeps me going, you know? Mm. So it's like finding that balance and then going through a lot of different people. You might have a good relationship in your social life with one person, but then maybe you'll have a better business relationship with somebody. But yeah. maybe y'all don't agree on religion. Can y'all come to a consensus on that? Yeah. So it's like real human dynamics, but I think respect and communication allows you to have that conversation. You're like, hey, like, you don't like working on Saturdays, but I also don't expect anybody to work as hard as me. Mm -mm. I want my photography business program to be the best photography business program in the world. Mm -hmm. Nobody else wants that vision but me. Yeah. So I can't expect anybody to work as hard as me for that thing. That logically makes no sense. Yeah. Unless they, they have equity in it or unless they have a stake in it or a partnership in it. Like if we sat down and mapped out this, all, all of us need to pull the weight, but right. sometimes somebody's going to pull more. Yeah. And then it comes back down to a conversation like, hey, man, I noticed that you've been pulling a lot more weight. Like, you feel some type of way about that? No. All right, but I do what I do. So, so I think it's like that. Okay. Wow. I love that. So you said that you want to have the best photography um, uh, company in the world and so what vision like what story do you think that you want to tell with with do you feel like it's art to you like what do you feel like your photography is I know you said before prior mm -hmm. that you didn't fully feel like you had like a theme or an exact vision <laughs> um, and <laughs> I listen I, I like personally resonate with that so but like do you think that over time maybe it has taken on a theme or like is there any like direction you necessarily wanted to go like vision wise because I've noticed sorry to cut you off no, no. But no, I've noticed the theme throughout your pictures. Like it's very like earthy, very sultry vibes, but it's also still very high fashion. And it's like still modern. You know, I feel like you're very mature. I didn't know you were only 26. And it's not because of looks, I just, because of maturity and expertise. You know what I mean? So it's like over time, I think it has kind of developed a theme. So what, what do you think is the story behind that? Or, and also what inspires you? Okay, so what inspires, I, I like people. Yeah. Right, so. I think of myself as a people collector. Mm. So my favorite thing to do in the world is find people that have talent. Mm. Even if it's music or art or photography or film, I'm like, oh, that person right there. Mm. Watch out for them in five years. It's my favorite thing to do. And mm. I've had a number of people in my life that 
I've found early on in their career yeah. that we have great relationships now. So people inspire me. I, I love growth. You, yeah. you know, I think life is ever changing, you know, like seasons come, plants grow, die, grow, repeat, 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 repeat. Right. And I think humans are like that, but in our passions. So I love seeing somebody able to go from 40000 a year to $100,000 a year mm. because you have to become a different type of person. Yeah. Because the mindset of achieving or making more money is completely different from one level to another. So yeah. it's not even the money that really excites me, it's who you have to become. Mm. So with my work, I've kept that mindset in the background mm -hmm. because I, when I cut off doing videography services, I decided that I wanted to be the best photographer that I could be. Mm. But when I kind of took a step back, I realized that the child Jordy loves yeah. business. Mm. So photography gave me a way to do business. Mm. So over time, I learned that, wow, like I want to just be the best photographer that I could be. So when I connect with people, I like to learn about their origins, what yeah. makes them them, and then capture that on camera. Mm. So all of my pictures will have a distinct feeling yeah. because we have a conversation like this. And like, hey, like, yeah. you, you know what's going on right now? Or even if it's not that deep, it's like, yo, oh yeah, y'all saw that thing that just came off the red carpet? You, you think we could do something like that? All right, bet. How could we do it in our own way? Mm. You know? Yeah. So, so there's that piece in it too. And then the other piece of where I see the business going is that the photography business boot camp came organically. Mm. I have a friend um, who like a few years ago we spoke about doing lighting workshops together. Okay. And an insight hit me. I was like, yo, there's so much photographers. Because we always like in the photography community, we always complain like, yo, like, there's so much photographers, like, mm, damn. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Right? And we realized that, wait, there are a lot of photographers, mm. and we're ahead of a lot of them, and a lot of them are ahead of us. So let's teach the ones that we're ahead of while, while we're building. Mm. And then that opened up the next part of the business, which is the education part. So that came over time. Mm -hmm. and realizing the need mm -hmm. and then the seed was the idea so we planted that idea yeah. and then in 2020 my first workshop that I held with um, good friend Sophia was March 7 2020 the week before the city lockdown wow that was the first lighting workshop that we held mm -hmm. after we come into that realization of oh well there's a lot of photographers let's teach them what we know and then that perspective because the photographers existed, the marketplace existed, but the idea now allowed me to see. Mm. Everything was there, I just couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. So now I saw it, the vision now is now bigger than just photography. It's like, mm. damn, photographers still don't know how to take deposits? God damn, like, yeah. Like, yeah, come on, bro. Like, I've been there before. Like, let me tell you how I did it, right? Yeah. It's like, wait, like, you never used the contract before? Nah, come over here, brother. Like, mm. yeah, let me show you. Why, you don't have a marketing plan? All right, come on, man. Let me show you something, mm. right? Yeah. And then that now is like, oh, my God. There's photographers in every country, in every part of the world, probably going through this. Yeah. And that excites mm. me because yeah. now I'm like, man, like, I think I might need 20 more years. Mm. Like to really take everything to the next level. I'm like, damn, I said 10 before. I think, like, yeah. yo, like, give me 20 more years. Mm. You know? Yeah. So, what is, what do you think um, is your criteria for the best? Like, when you say you want to be the best photographer, you want to be the best. So, like, what does the best look like for you? Hmm. Um, enjoying the projects that I create. building the biggest business that I can, transforming as many lives as I humanly can until I gotta pack it up, and creating concepts that challenge you to think, that you could enjoy it, that you could feel emotion from it when you look at it like, wow. Like, I could see one of those kids are happy in that picture. Yeah. 
a lot. She was really feeling sexy that day. Mm. Yo, like, he looked like he'd been working for years. Like, he captured that story. Mm. The combination of those things, you know? Yeah. The combination of that. Like, like that's my criteria, so. Yes. Because I want to build. I, I, I just love building. Yeah. So, the business for me is a constant game of, like, yo, I just want to build more. Build more. Work with more people. Build big ideas. Work on bigger commercials. Work yeah. with the biggest brands in the world. And just create. You, you know, doing what we love to do on as big of a scale possible. So, that's, that's how I think about success in that way for me. Oh, if you had a do's and don't list for somebody who's starting on a path much like yours when you were younger on this journey, like say if you had like five tips or so, what would it, what would it be? Because we'd be needing to know, you know? <laughs> do's and don'ts. So I'm going to start with the do's first. Okay. And then the don'ts. Do one do or thing that I would tell my earlier self in photography is... Yes. Um, Invest in coaches. Coaches? Um, coaches. Oh, coaches, so, yes. So people that can give you training on how to do the thing. Mm. Um, YouTube has been my greatest resource. Mm. But I think when I started investing in coaching and classes, that sped up my journey a lot. Mm. Right? Yeah. If, if you listen to the right people, you still get good information. But that's one thing. Coaching. I think patience is that you have to give yourself a reasonable amount of time to do the thing that you believe in. Mm -hmm. So if you give yourself a year, in between a year you're gonna grow, but, but you're gonna fall so many times that if you don't give yourself a sufficient amount of time, like the stock market, right? Yeah. The stock market over every period of 10 years, it always goes up. But when you zoom in on the chart, one year it's like all the way down, one year it's all the way up. Mm. So it's constant ups and downs. So patience. Yeah. The third, um, the, the next thing, I don't know what number I'm at, mm -hmm. is align yourself with people that want the best for you. Mm -hmm. Right? So number three is what we're on, right? Yeah. Align yourself with people that want the best for you. A lot of the times we want our friends, we want our family members and everybody to, you know, be on that same page. But sometimes they have other things that they're preoccupied. So you kind of have to yeah. go out to search for those people who care about you and want to pour into you that will really help you get along. Um, another one I would say, because I could go on forever, but I'll make the list concise. Thank you. Um, is mm. to don't be hard on yourself and give mm. yourself grace um, as far as things not to do is don't rush the process um, don't walk into it with ego mm. um, don't think that you know everything because you limit the amount of um, things that you're able to learn mm -hmm. and don't go in to a situation assuming the worst because mm. the worst thing that you could have is a scarcity mindset mm. and a scarcity mindset means that you prevent yourself from seeing the opportunities. So that's the a small list of things that I would say for any creative who's really looking to get into the whole thing. Okay, so thank you everybody so much for tuning in to What's In Your Bag. We had the million dollar photographer today, Jordy. Please let us know, yes, yes, please let us know how they can enroll inside of your mentorship program and where they can find you. Um, so there's a few ways. Um, you can connect with me on Instagram at it's Jordy, I-T-Z underscore j-o-r-d-i-i -I, two eyes and you can find me on that on all platforms and then um there's a free application that i have which you can find at the bottom of this video it's a free application you fill it out you um give us some information about your business and where you want to go and then we um set up a call with you real easy simple process one two three so you guys better get in tune uh, once again you know you guys have been tuned in with your girl key please follow me on instagram at glam dunk if you're cool you'll find my tiktok too um so we're just so glad to have you thank you so much jordy thank you for having me no problem bye